talk to you uh, tonight about um, uh, the necessity of repenting and returning to God. Uh, the necessity of repenting and returning to God. Why is it necessary uh, to repent and return to God? And uh, I believe that two words that we're going to be hearing uh, throughout America in the days to come, and those words are repent, return to God. I, I see that coming, and, uh, and so uh, I want to uh, talk to you tonight about why is, that, why is that so urgent, why is that necessary, why is that so important. And, uh, in Amos chapter 4, um, many of us are familiar, very familiar with this, this book, and especially with this chapter, um, and th there's a refrain that, that occurs in, uh, actually it occurs uh, five times in verses uh, 6 through 11 in verse 6 uh, yet have you not returned unto me says the Lord verse 8 yet you have not returned unto me says the Lord and then verse 9 verse 10 and verse 11 and, and God is doing things uh, for his people to return to him, and then they're, they're not heeding those warnings. Okay, you may be seated. And so why is it uh, so urgent that uh, this nation, really, and it, it needs to start with us individually, and, and that is repent and return to God. Uh, the nation has drifted away uh, from God in many ways, in many areas. And repentance means a, a change of mind, change of attitude that results in a change of behavior. That's what repentance is. Uh, we, we change our attitude. We change our mind. Uh, we're going in one direction, and we turn, and we go in another uh, direction. And interesting to note that of the seven churches in Asia Minor uh, mentioned in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, Jesus said to five of those seven churches, repent or else. And to the church at Ephesus, he said, he, he complimented them for a number of things. And then he said, this, I have this, this one thing against you. Well, you have left your first love. You've left your first love. And in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, uh, God says, my people have committed two evils. And this is a reference to the southern kingdom. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And they've hewed out for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that will hold no water. And throughout the book of Jeremiah, in fact, the next time you read the book of, of Jeremiah, if you haven't done so, circle the words repent and return. And uh, as you know, when I read the Bible, I, I'm, always, I'm always looking for something. When I read a book in the Bible, I'm looking for something. And uh, I read through, actually, uh, Ezekiel, uh, Jeremiah, Amos, Hosea, Habakkuk. And I was just looking for the sins uh, of the nation. And uh, we'll, I'll, we'll mention some of these tonight. And so, number one... It's, it's, it's urgent, it's, it's necessary that we individually and as a church and as a nation repent and return to God because God warns before he disciplines or judges. Before he disciplines or judges, uh, God warns. And what's happening in Amos uh, chapter 4 verses 6 through 11, God is, is warning the people. He's warning his people uh, before he disciplines them. He's warning them. He wants them to return to him so that uh, discipline will not be uh, necessary. And uh, I do believe that what we are experiencing at this very moment are God's final warnings. Uh, God has been warning this nation uh, for, for, for years. God warned the uh, people through Noah before the flood, 
for 120 years. They had 120 years of warning. The northern kingdom, and Amos is writing about the northern kingdom, and here in chapter 4 of Amos, uh, these warnings are for the northern kingdom. And uh, Hosea actually preached to the northern kingdom for over 50 years. And so the northern kingdom had over 50 years of warning. And then the southern kingdom had 40, over 40 years of warning through the uh, prophet Jeremiah. And this nation, uh, Hurricane Katrina, August 2005, I believe was a warning. Uh, 9-11, I believe, was a warning. And you can, you can list a number of other things uh, that I believe were warnings. And right now, I believe that what we're experiencing are God's final warnings. I don't believe they're going to be any more after this. If the nation does not repent and return to God, uh, then discipline or judgment is going to take place. And so it's urgent. And I know some of you want me to get off of this and talk about something else. Talk about something exciting. Something that makes you feel good. But if you're at the edge of a cliff and you're about to fall off, you need some information. That's going to encourage you to get back from the edge and don't fall off. If you're in a fire and it's burning down, what do you want to hear? How can I get out of this? Um, the way that this nation is going to get out of this, all of the things. And this, I'm not referring to one thing. I should, maybe I should say these. <laughs> is there has to be repentance and a return to God. Now please notice the things that God did here to warn his people. And some of these things God permitted but because they could not have happened without his permission, he takes responsibility for them. As you read through Amos chapter 4, verses 6 through 11, God takes responsibility for every problem. There's a famine. God says, I did it. The, the, the rain is with hell. God said, I did it. And when the uh, rain is uh, with hell, you're going to have drought, and then you can, you're going to have fires. And then God goes on to say that uh, uh, I damage your food crops. And you can expect, and you know what? We've seen some of these things. We've seen some of these things in, in America. We've seen drastic changes in the weather. And you can expect to see more where reporters are seeing or people, you know, they interview people and they say, we've had this before, whatever it is, whether it be a tornado, whether it be a flood, whether it be uh, damage to the fruit crop, no matter what, you, you'll hear words like, we've had this, but we've never had it like this. We've had heat before, but not like this. We've had fires before, but not like this. We've had rain before, but not like this. And on and on and on and on. You know, expect those words. You, you're, going to, you're going to hear those. And then again, uh, damage to food crops. You're going to read about uh, places where locusts dis damage a whole crop in a matter of minutes. Not hours, but minutes. Uh, expect to uh, read about that. And so as you read here, you just look at all of the things that God, that God uh, produced uh, or permitted but again, he takes responsibility for everything. And you, you, have, you have war. You, you have war in uh, 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 verse, in verse 10, you have war. And in verse 9, again, you have damage to the food crop. This is Amos chapter 4. And uh, please notice that word. We, we did a study on this word uh, pestilence. Amos chapter 4, verse 10. I have sent among you the, what is the word? Pestilence. And that word uh, translates uh, a Hebrew word that can also be translated epidemic. It can also be translated pandemic. And the same word is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13, where God says, If I uh, shut up the heavens that there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, 
if I send pestilence. In verse 14, he says, this is what you're supposed, this is what you are to do. And so God uh, takes responsibility. And so there was the destruction of the city. But yeah, you can, you, you've already read this, many of you have. But for those who have not read, uh, read and reread Amos chapter 4, verses 6 through 11, and just notice the things that God either produced or permitted. But in, in either case, whether he produced it or whether he permitted it, he takes responsibility for it, and he says, uh, I did it. Now, please remember, God is sovereign at all times and over everyone and everything. You didn't hear that. God is sovereign at all times. Say that with me, all times. Over everyone. Say that with me. <laughs> and over everything in this universe. There isn't a moment when he is not in complete control, no matter how things may appear. Did you know God is sovereign over Satan? Oh, I could give you a number of places you can read, but just read Job uh, chapters 1 and 2. And Satan even caused a, a storm that killed the children of uh, Job, but he had to get permission from God to do that. He wasn't able to do a thing against Job without God's okay. And his complaint was, when God said, have you considered my servant Job? The complaint was, yes, I've considered Job, but you've got a hedge about him. I can't get to him, you see. And if you let me get to him, I'll make him curse you to your face, and so on. Uh, but everything that Satan did, he had to get permission. And I find, I find comfort in knowing that. And you know, when Satan does something, I, you know, I know Satan did it, and uh, you know, my question when Satan does something, my question is, why did God let him do that? <laughs> That's what I want to know. What did I do <laughs> or didn't do that caused God to allow him to do that? And of course, God, what God may be doing is just uh, disclosing my faith. Uh, God may be developing me, you know, helping me to grow in, in grace and, and so on. And, and God will do that, you know. Uh, Jeremiah uh, pitches God as a, as a potter. You know, we're, we're on the wheel and, you know, we're the clay. And uh, uh, Malachi pitches him as a uh, refiner, and the, uh, the substance, the gold or whatever. And, he, you know, he heats up the furnace to get rid of the uh, impurities. And so God is, uh, God is in control at all times. He, did you know that God is control, in control over rulers? Here's some scriptures you need, to, you need to memorize. Proverbs 21, 1. The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. He turns it whatever way he wants to. And please read Daniel chapter 4, verses 28 through 37. And just notice how God was in complete control of Nebuchadnezzar. And when Nebuchadnezzar, you know, got lifted up in pride, he, he, he lived as an animal for about seven years until he got some sense. And notice what he says at the end of Daniel chapter 4. Those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. All the inhabitants of the earth are... Re this is Nebuchadnezzar talking. All, after seven years of insanity, uh, all the inhabitants of the earth are regarded as nothing. And he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. None can stay his hand or say to him, what are you doing? And those that walk in pride, he's able to abase. Oh, read... Uh, uh, read, read, read Daniel. And, and the Bible says that promotion is from the Lord. It comes either from the East nor from it. Promotion is the Lord. Psalm, 70, Psalm 75. And God controlled the rain. God controls the rain. Uh, look at Amos uh, chapter 4 now. And notice uh, verse 7. And also I have withholden the rain from you when... There were yet three months to the harvest. I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. God controls the rain. And in Genesis, for 40 days and 40, 40 nights, it rained. And it, it, it rained and, and it stopped. The, the rain stopped when God said, rain no more. God 
controls the rain. And you know what else he controls? He controls the wind. In Exodus, in Exodus chapter 14, verse 21, we're told there that, that God took a strong east wind and divided the waters of the Red Sea. And then he fanned the bottom dry, so his people went across, not in muddy water, or in a muddy land, but they went across on dry ground. And then in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 and 12, uh, at, at Mount Horeb in, in July, uh, uh, July uh, 2018, we, we were at this mountain. Uh, it's, a, it's a stone, it's a, it's a stone mountain. Uh, Mount Sinai and Mount Horeb, they're really just right together. And, uh, and, and we, we're told there in, in Kings that, it, that there was a wind that was so strong that it broke the rocks in pieces. Now that's a strong wind. Uh, I don't believe that there, there, there's never been or never will be a wind that's stronger than that wind that broke rocks in pieces. And you know what the Bible says? God was just passing by. And then there was a, uh, there was a, a earthquake. God controls earthquakes. And then there was a fire. God controls fires. And what, what impresses me is that God was just passing by. You know, what I think, I wonder what would have happened if he had stopped. He was just passing by. God is sovereign. Sovereign over rulers. Jesus said to Pilate in John chapter 19, verse 11, You could have no power at all against me except it were given to you from above. No power at all, except it were given to you from above. God controls rulers. He controls kings. He's sovereign at all times and over all things. Again, John 19, 11. You could have no power, none, at all against me, unless it was given to you from above. And then... Oh, this one brings me a lot of comfort. God is sovereign over diseases. God is sovereign. There's no disease over which God is not sovereign or in complete control. Look at Amos. Look at Amos chapter 4 and verse 10 again. I have sent among you pestilence or pandemics after the manner of Egypt, of the ten plagues, Two were diseases. Two of the ten plagues were diseases. And God said to the Hebrews, after they crossed the Red Sea and they came to this place called, called Mara, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, he said, if you, will, if you will obey me, I will put none of these diseases upon you that I put upon the Egyptians. I put diseases upon them. But I won't put any diseases upon you if you will obey me and keep my statutes. And that, by the way, is a food loss. And again, you know how I, many of you know how I feel about food laws. You know, I keep them not for, uh, to be sanctified or to be saved. I keep them for health reasons only. Health reasons only. And, uh, oh, I, get, I did a whole series <laughs> on that. But, uh, but anyway... For health reasons only. That's, that's why I did it. And I tell people all the time. You know, sometimes I'm in the store and people would be getting some pork chops or pork bacon and they try to hide it from me. And I tell you, you don't need to do that. You know, listen, eating pork and chitlins and all that won't keep you out of heaven. It'll probably get you there before I do. And so, and so don't, don't hide your stuff from me. You eat, what, you eat whatever you wanted to eat. You know, that is you. It's between you and the Lord. Uh, but uh, I, want, I want to be healthy. And since I've uh, gotten away from pork and a lot of other stuff, I don't have headaches anymore. There are a whole lot of physical uh, problems that I once had that I don't have anymore. And, uh, and I found substitutes for everything. And uh, anyway, I don't miss anything. I admit it took me a while to find a substitute for ham hocks for my greens. But, uh, but I did find some. So anyway, there are, there are, there are substitutes. But God is, God is sovereign 
over diseases. He's sovereign over epidemics. He's sovereign over pandemics. He is sovereign at all times over everyone and everything. Number two, uh, we should uh, pray and, and, and for, a, a, for repentance and return to God because God disciplines or judges when the cup of iniquity is full. God disciplines or judges when the cup of iniquity is full. Now, iniquity is sin. You know, that, that's, that's sin. And God takes all sin seriously. All sin. All sin seriously. And sin is simply doing what God said not to do or failing to do what God said do. That's a simple definition of sin. Doing what God said not to do. Don't do that. Or failing to do what God said do. And God takes all sin seriously. You know, what did Adam and Eve do? All they did was ate from a tree that was forbidden. They ate fruit. That was, that's all. That's all they did. And the Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death is passed upon all men, for they all have sinned. All they did was just ate some forbidden fruit. Uh, Moses, God told Moses to speak to a rock. And there were two occasions where the people were without water. The first time, God told Moses to hit the rock. And some believe that that's a picture of the crucifixion, Jesus the rock, and so on. And the next time they were without water, uh, God told Moses to speak to the rock. Not to hit it, but to speak to it. But Moses was upset with the people, and he, you, you rebels, and so And he hit the rock that God told him to speak to. And because of that sin, Moses did not enter the promised land. He was able to look over into prom to the promised land. In one of our tours uh, a couple of years ago, we, we were uh, near that place where he looked over into uh, the promised land. And uh, so Ananias and Sapphira, Acts chapter 5, they just lied about the amount of money they were giving. <laughs> you know, you, you, they were free to give whatever they wanted to give, but they lied about it, and they dropped dead. You know, thank God for his grace. You know, what if liars drop dead? <laughs> and then in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the people were coming to the Lord's table uh, in an unworthy manner, the manner in which they were coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And some of them were becoming sick and some were dying. God takes all sin seriously. Now, there are five sins, there are five sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's in Ezekiel chapter 16, Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 49 and 50. Ezekiel 16, 49 and 50, there are five sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. We, don't, we won't take the time to turn there. But Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 49 and 50. And there you'll see pride. And uh, in fact, all of the, all of the nations, if you, you study the sins of the northern kingdom, the sins of the, uh, of the uh, southern kingdom, uh, you'll see that one of the sins, uh, all of the nations, all of the nations had a, a, a pride problem. And, and pride is that feeling that uh, I don't need God. That, that, it's that feeling, that attitude, I, I don't. I, I, don't, I don't need God. I can, I can get along uh, w w without God. And this can happen to a nation, uh, especially a nation that, uh, that has wealth, a nation that has superior warriors, a nation that has superior wealth, uh, a nation that has uh, 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 leaders that are wise, wisdom. It's very easy to feel that you don't need God. Now, yes, 
a nation needs wep weapons. It, it serves as a deterrent. If you've got superior weapons and soldiers, nobody's going to take you on. Unless they're crazy. So it's a deterrent. But at the same time, you can have all of these things. Wisdom, wealth, warriors, weapons. But if you don't have God, you can fall. The security of a nation is in God. Uh, read the account of the Greek historian Herodotus of uh, Babylon uh, and, and, and how Babylon was, was conquered by the Medes and the Persians. And you can read about it in Daniel chapter 5, but there are a lot of details that's not given in Daniel uh, chapter 5. You have to go to history. Uh, but uh, uh, Babylon was built to be a city that could not be conquered. All of the uh, known means of conquest, Babylon was built to deal with all of them, every single one of them. Uh, but when God was mocked by Belshazzar, and, and, and there is a message online uh, where I go into some details with regard to this. But anyway, I, I just want us to understand that no matter how secure you may think you are, if God says your time is up, your time is up. And this is why it's necessary for this nation to repent and return to God. The security of a nation uh, is, is in God. And then another sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was gluttony. A third one was idleness. Fourth one was neglect of the poor and needy. And Jesus, and that was a sin, by the way, of all the nations, by the way, all of them. This was a sin of all the, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. A neglect of the poor and needy. Jesus says you're going to have the poor with you always. And, and God says this also in Deuteronomy. And so God doesn't expect us to eliminate the poor, but we are to care for them, the poor and needy. And that was a sin of all the nation's neglect. And you know what the fifth sin was for Sodom and Gomorrah? Thank you for watching another broadcast of Living by the Word with Pastor Julius R. Malone. Please join us next week for the conclusion of this message. In life, we will face different types of storms. Some storms are seasonal, some are self-inflicted, some are totally unexpected. Please order a copy of Pastor Malone's book, Going Through the Storms of Life, to help you navigate through the storms of life. You may order your copy by going to our website at newtchurch.org. New Testament Church of Milwaukee is a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. If you enjoyed today's message and would like to view it again or view previous messages, please visit our website, newtchurch.org, or follow us on Facebook at New Testament Church of Milwaukee. To support our outreach, you can also go to newtchurch.org. May God bless you and keep you safe.